Hatsauce.com. The Wolf Pack is back. For the third and final installment of the Hangover Trilogy. Thankfully, Bradley Cooper, Ed Helm, and Zach Galifianakis are back. Did I pronounce that right? I don't even know if Zach Galifianakis even knows how to pronounce his own name. And along for the ride is the lovable Dr. Ken Jeong as the devious Chow, bitches! Ah! But before I get into part three, let's do a little recap of part one and part two. Todd Phillips introduced us to the very first Hangover. It first came out in 2009. It was fresh, original, funny as hell, and it became the highest grossing rated R film of all time. The premise goes like this. Phil, Dr. Stu, and Alan wake up in Vegas to find that their friend Doug is missing. They don't remember anything. And the big problem that they have is that Doug is getting married in three days. They bump into a tiger, Mike Tyson, Ken Jeong, and for some reason, Stu's missing a tooth. The movie was so successful in 2011, there came a sequel. The problem with it, or at least the problem that I had with it, was that it was exactly the same. Instead of Doug getting married this time, it was Dr. Stu getting married to the very lovely Jamie Chung. The exact same thing happens. The only difference is that it's in Bangkok. All they really did was just cut and paste the formula of the first one and just put it in a different location. The last week I made a review on Star Trek Into Darkness and I was explaining how sometimes in the sequel they make it bigger, louder, and more crazier but lose substance and character development and story and blah blah blah. Sure it was bigger, louder, and very exciting but they still had a compelling story with it. And anyone can appreciate a fresh and compelling story. Unfortunately Hangover Part 2 was not fresh, new, and compelling. It was so unoriginal, so rehashed that in the end I just didn't give a damn. Sure, Dr. Stu manages to stand up to Jamie Chung's father in the end, but really, uh, I, I didn't care. And then comes along part three. First and foremost, the thing that I appreciated most about part three was that they did something completely different. The focus of the movie tends to follow Zach Galifianakis' character, Alan. And in the first 10 minutes of the movie, Alan's father meets Mr. Mayhem. Quote unquote, yes, that was a reference to Sons of Anarchy. And with Zach being a 42 year old man who's still living in the home of his parents, this guy has some serious problems. So the wolf pack and the rest of the family gather together to help Alan. They do a small intervention with him, and then it becomes a road trip movie. Kinda. But something happens! John Goodman comes along playing a character named Marshall, along with his right hand man, Black Doug. They kidnap the wolf pack, Doug. And they tell Phil, Stu, and Alan that if they don't find Leslie Chow in three days, they're gonna kill Wolfpack Doug. And right off the bat, this is a very different kind of movie since the last two. Instead of it being a comedic story of trying to find somebody, it becomes a crime thriller of trying to save their friend's life. Sure, I can appreciate the fresh new take in part three, but I will have to admit in part two, it's by far the most extreme out of the three. And that's not to say that part three wasn't funny. There are some really funny moments and some interesting surprises along the way. The big one up, in my opinion, that part three has over part two is that I actually gave a damn in the end. And what was it that made me give a damn, you may ask? Zach Galifianakis' character, Alan, actually matures a little bit in the movie. There's actual character development and growth in this film. I am actually compelled and intrigued. And yeah, part of it does have to do with Melissa McCarthy showing up as a pawn shop owner named Cassie. So this is, without a doubt, the final Hangover movie. It really wraps things up nicely in the end. Instead of leaving me with a bitter taste in my mouth like it did with part two, part three is the solemn goodbye that leaves you on a pretty good note. So if you're wondering if I did loser reviews a couple of years ago and I had the opportunity to grade part one, I would have given that one a 4.2. That was a classic in my books. And then I remember being super excited about part two, but I ended up being very disappointed. A 2.5 is what I would have given that one. It was unoriginal, very predictable, and I just didn't care in the end. And as for part three, no, it's not the funniest, no, it's not the best, but what it did do in the end was tie and wrap things up in a neat little package and says farewell. <clears throat> and with that being said, Hangover part three, I give it a three. Oh well, yeah, there's always a recurring gimmick in the Hangover movies. Something bad always happens to Stu, and Hangover part three is no exception. And what happens to Stu in Hangover part three in my opinion, is by far the funniest of the three things that ever happened to him. Keep an eye out for that. Now, stay tuned for Fast and Furious 6. Peace.